Hello everyone, my name is Marco. I'm a singer, songwriter, voice teacher from Italy, living in New York City. Welcome back to Let's Talk About Singing. I'm usually a lot happier and a lot more cheerful than I might look and sound today. I'm actually trying my best to speak properly, even though it's still kind of hard. If you have been following my channel, you might have noticed that I haven't been posting anything the past weeks. And I just wanted to share this with you. That's because I got sick. I tested positive for COVID-19 on March 3rd. And it's been a rough couple of weeks for me. You know, at first the doctor told me right away that I'm young, I'm healthy, I don't have any condition. Usually people my age get away with it in, in a week or a few days and symptoms are mild. So that is also what I thought. Um, well, that's definitely not what happened. The first three days, symptoms were kind of mild. It was kind of like having the flu, a little sore throat, a mild fever, a headache, a sensation of tiredness. And then it just got worse and worse. Um, I don't think anyone can understand how the fever hits you when you have COVID. I had all the symptoms, the body aches, are insane the headache is just unbearable I always say this when I try to describe it I felt like I was thrown on the ground and kicked repeatedly on every inch of my body I was in bed for days just sleeping sleeping and hurting <laughs> I just couldn't do anything else um, I was in bed with three blankets and the heat on and I just couldn't help shivering and my feet were freezing, my hands were freezing. The shivers are like nothing I've ever experienced before. You feel these shivers running all over your body and they hurt. Your skin actually hurts when you shiver. It was so weird and, and painful. Doing anything is hard. You lose your appetite. I lost my sense of taste and smell. When you lose your sense of taste and smell, it's not like, okay, everything tastes is just like nothing. No, your senses are just distorted. So everything actually tastes is pretty disgusting and it's very hard to eat. So the first week was just this roller coaster of symptoms and pain and ache and fever going up and down, taking Tylenol, taking zinc, taking vitamin supplements, but really no improvement. My fever actually peaked eight days into it. So after eight days, my fever went up to 102.2 or 39 Celsius. That was the highest. And again, considering that it was after a week, it was really, upsetting to me I was just feeling so powerless and feeling like this is just not getting better it's actually getting worse you know me being a singer the thing that I was concerned the most was of course my lungs and out of all the symptoms the only one that I didn't have luckily were, were the scary ones I could breathe properly I got myself an oximeter and my oxygen levels were always great I didn't have any difficulty breathing and I wasn't coughing as soon as I was told that I had COVID, my first thought was, please don't give me a cough. Please don't give me breathing issues. You know, I'm a singer. This is my life. This is my source of income, my job. This is all I do. So please, please, please don't give me that. And for the first week, I wasn't really coughing. And then on the eighth day, I started coughing a lot. And then when I was coughing, there was blood in the sputum. So that really freaked me out, coughing a lot. And then when I was coughing, there was blood in the sputum. So that really freaked me out. Uh, I spoke, to, I went to, I actually went to the ER because you know, you're just never too safe. And the doctors told me that, you know, my, my oxygen levels were great and I'm young and I don't have any conditions. So there was no need to do a chest x-ray despite me wanting one. 
they visited me with the stethoscope and they told me that my lungs were clear. So that actually made me feel better, but the fever just wouldn't go away. And then the day after the cough intensified and was really, really strong. It's also a cough that I have never experienced before. You feel like your whole chest is shaking. I feel like you can feel your lungs actually shaking, almost as if something was going through it with such power. Your throat hurts. It, it's just terrible. It was terrible. So after two weeks of nonstop fever, I decided to just insist and get this chest x-ray. And then once again, the doctor told me that according to the stethoscope, my lungs were clear, my oxygen levels were great, I'm young, I don't have any conditions, so probably the fever was just lingering a little more, sometimes it happens with COVID. I insisted on a chest x-ray and it turned out that I have a mild case of pneumonia, bilateral pneumonia, so both lungs are affected. They told me it was mild, that it was not too bad, but of course they put me on antibiotics and they also gave me a steroid. That was definitely the worst that could have happened. You know, being a singer, that was my biggest fear and it happened. Now I'm at my ninth day of antibiotics and I feel definitely better. The fever is gone, but I'm exhausted, constantly exhausted. I can't do anything other than sleep. The smallest thing causes me shortness of breath and fatigue and headache and dizziness. I take a shower and then I have to lie down. Speaking is not easy as you can hear and I'm telling you I'm trying my best, but this is the best that my voice can sound right now. I am grateful, I am very grateful that you know, I didn't have to go to the ICU, that I wasn't hospitalized, that my breathing was not affected. I just cannot believe that my lungs were strong enough to keep my oxygen at a good level despite having pneumonia and COVID. So I'm so grateful for that. At the same time, you know, this really affects me mentally and physically, especially as a singer. I can tell that it's gonna be a long, long recovery. So I decided that I can share this with you guys and maybe by doing that something positive can get out of it it can be maybe educational and we can share common experiences if you also had COVID and you sing or even if you don't sing if you have breathing problems or if your voice is not as it used to be I want to share this path that I'm gonna go through in trying to recover my voice and bring it back to the way it was and I want to do it step by step and slowly and I want you to be part of it. If you are a singer or a vocal coach, I would love to get advice and suggestions and you know, all I need is actually positive vibes and encouragement because this has been really, really hard. I'm not gonna lie. It's been possibly the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I have never felt anything like this before. As I said already, I don't think anybody can understand if you haven't felt it. So as you can hear right now, my voice is breathy. I am kind of struggling to speak properly. I'm usually very resonant and my voice is very powerful and projected and higher placed. And now I kind of feel like my chords are not exactly closing. I definitely cannot sing. And of course me being a singer, I'm, I'm in a rush, I'm in a hurry. I want to make sure that everything is okay. I want to make sure that I didn't damage anything. I want to make sure that my vocal cords are okay. But you know, my lungs being affected definitely doesn't help both with speaking and singing. So I'm not going to do any exercise yet because I think that the best thing to do right now is rest and make sure that my system is healed before I can start some kind of rehabilitation physically and vocally. You know, we sometimes forget that the voice is not an artificial instrument. The voice is a physical instrument and it's part of our body and because it's part of our body it's affected by everything that goes on in our body and in our mind too. I said that in my introduction video if you saw that. We, we are our own instrument from head to toes so everything affects the voice. Me having been so tired and so sick 
and so weak. And also, you know, antibiotics and all these other meds, they really mess up your system despite helping you heal weak. And also, you know, antibiotics and all these other meds, they really mess up your system despite helping you heal. So it's, so of course my voice is not good. It can't be good because the body around the vocal cords is not good. So the best thing is definitely rest and have the sickness take its course and go away. But there's definitely little things that I can do. And as I said, I wanna share this path of recovery with you guys and maybe make it educational for you as well. One thing that is very important, especially for the cough, is making sure that you're hydrated in different ways. So I have a humidifier on 24 seven. Humidifiers are great guys, even if you're not sick, if you wanna sing, or even if you don't wanna sing, if you wanna have good vocal health, please get a humidifier, especially if you live in a dry environment. In the summertime, for example, if you have the AC on all day and you sleep with the AC on, you might wake up in the morning and you might feel a little hoarse and a little, you might feel that there's a little mucus and you, <clears throat> you have this little, little phlegm in your throat use a humidifier you'll see a huge difference they're not expensive you can buy it online for as cheap as like I don't know, 20 25 dollars 30 dollars i have one on 24 7 as i said in these days it really helped with the cough it really helped with mending a little bit you know the, the blood has gone i'm not coughing anymore luckily second thing is Drinking, drinking a lot of water. This might sound like a very simple advice, but I can't stress enough how important it is to hydrate. And this is where sometimes people get confused. You don't hydrate in the moment that you are drinking. I see a lot of people singing and then drinking as they're singing because they feel a constriction in their throat or they feel like it itches or it hurts. Sure, the water that you drink in that moment helps cooling down your throat, so it has kind of like a numbing effect, but you should be hydrated before you sing because the water that you're drinking doesn't really go through your vocal cords. I know some people think that everything goes through your vocal cords, like your, the food and the water. No, only air goes through your vocal cords. So, as I said, the water refreshes the throat, but doesn't really touch the vocal cords. You have to be hydrated on a cellular level. So once you drink, the water you know, gets in your system, but it takes a while before you are hydrated. So you might be dehydrated because you haven't been drinking and then you go singing, and then you think that drinking as you're singing will help. That is not what you should do. So I'm trying to drink as much as possible so that my vocal cords stay hydrated the way they're supposed to be. And then I'm trying not to speak too much. I'm trying to rest and I'm trying to place my voice a little higher as I'm speaking so that it's not too heavy on the cords themselves. Now, of course, having pneumonia, breathing is really a problem. And you might know that the voice is the result of air going through your vocal cords. So if your breathing system is not exactly functioning, your voice will not exactly function. Because like I always say, air is the fuel of the voice engine. So me having pneumonia right now, it's like my engine is broken and needs to be fixed and there's no amount of fuel that can fix it. But I am definitely doing some breathing exercises, like the regular normal breathing exercises with the s I don't know if you guys know about that, you know, I breathe for a certain amount of seconds, then I hold for a certain amount of seconds, and then I release for another certain amount of seconds. I would say maybe I inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and then do this hissing thing, or maybe even this little blowing thing, as if I was blowing on candles, for like eight or 12 seconds. That really helps you know, with lung capacity, that really relaxes me as well and slows down my heartbeat. 
because I have to say that my pulse is a little elevated right now because of the sickness, because of everything being such an effort, you know, so even like walking to the bathroom and coming back, I feel like my heart is beating faster than it would do in, in a normal condition. They've been helping throughout all these weeks. I've been doing, I've been trying to do a few minutes every day and I noticed a huge difference from before and after. So, you know, if you have been going through something like this, you can try as well to just inhale with your nose, possibly lying down so that you make sure that you're not lifting your chest. But, you know, inhaling with your nose or with your mouth as if you were drinking from a straw. I always say this, I always use this example, like, then hold it for a few seconds and then Now, if you're sick the way I am, you really want to take it easy. Even if you know that you can hold it for longer, don't push it. This is not about testing yourself. This is about relaxing. This is about trying to make things normal. So there's no need to take like a, a huge amount of air in and push it to the limit when it comes to exhaling, making sure that you can hold your breath for 16 seconds 20 seconds it's not about that not right now but as i said it really helps so if you guys have been going through anything like this or simply if you want to work on your breath try with something like that make sure that your shoulders are relaxed and chest is relaxed and you inhale for a certain amount of seconds and then you can you can either hold it as i was doing it or you can right away on the air that you just took hiss or blow. Five minutes, 10 minutes, make it relaxing. Make it as some kind of meditation, some kind of relaxation exercise. It's not, we're not talking singing now. We're just talking about trying to rehabilitate everything and bring it back to normal. I'm gonna have another doctor appointment. I'm gonna do another chest x-ray possibly. And I'm just gonna go day by day with what they tell me and Probably soon I'm gonna start doing some exercises, making sure that I can phonate better. And I'm definitely gonna go have a laryngoscopy. If you are a singer, please get a laryngoscopy, even like once a year, just to check, just to make sure that everything is okay. You might never know. It's better to be safe than sorry. Get a laryngoscopy and check your vocal cords and make sure they're okay. If you sing a lot, if you tour, if you perform all the time. You want to take care of your instrument. You want to make sure that your instrument is functioning perfectly and have, and that there's no issue ever. So please get a laryngoscopy. I haven't had mine in a while, so I'm as soon as I feel better, I'm definitely gonna go. And if I need a little vocal therapy, I'll share that with you as well. I'm probably gonna do some sessions with other vocal coaches as well. And this is something that I always say to people just because I'm a coach it doesn't mean that I don't need another coach helping me it doesn't mean that I don't still study I believe that comparing methods and exercises and ideas it's the best way to grow nobody is an absolute teacher I actually encourage sometimes some of my students to try different teachers and then maybe come back and see what they get from them I had many teachers in my life and they all gave me something that helped me build my technique, my method, my artistry, my voice. So I'm probably gonna do some sessions with them and maybe share them with you. If you are a singer again, or a teacher, please comment, reach out. You can message me at let's talk about singing 84 at gmail.com. I'm open to suggestions, I'm open to collaborations. I just really want my voice back as soon as possible, but I'm not gonna push, I'm gonna do everything in due time. And, you know, I, this has really affected me mentally. It's been really hard. I have to say that my, I live in New York here with a roommate, but he was gone because he was on vacation the whole time I was sick. So I went through all this by myself and it was really challenging and really hard. I'm not ashamed to admit that I had some breakdown moments sometimes where I just cried from the exhaustion and, and, and the sense of helplessness. And, you know, so I believe that sharing this 
is some kind of therapy for me too. And getting advice and, and suggestions and or just positive energy and reassurance from you will really help my recovery, both physically and especially mentally. So please, please, please give me all the advice that you want that you can if you've been through this share your experience put it in the comments let's talk about it let's turn this ugliness into something positive and beautiful and maybe possibly helpful for all the people that have been affected by this even though even if they even if they don't sing let's make it even bigger than the singing itself let's make it about rehabilitating your voice and you know guys your voice is your number one tool of expression so even if you don't sing nobody likes to have their voice compromised nobody likes to have their voice not working well so i really hope that by sharing this i can help people recover and we can go through this journey together and i am absolutely a hundred percent confident that my voice will be back um it could take you know whatever it takes and <laughs> even if it takes months I I've been through vocal issues before you know if you're a professional singer you probably had some vocal issue I've, I've been singing for 20 years and I was always able to overcome all every issue that I had and this is not this is this really hit me I have to say this really um, Hit me really hard but my spirit is still intact i'm very positive that i'm gonna be back on my feet in every sense physically mentally and especially vocally because this is my life this is all i do this is all i want to do and i'm not gonna allow any sickness to bring me down and take it away from me all right Thank you guys for watching. Please bear with me. I can't wait to go back to do all my reactions and analysis and be positive and joyful and, and share my knowledge and my life and my art with you. Please everyone, be safe. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Take your precautions. See if you're eligible for the vaccine. Please don't take this chance. I know that in the majority of the cases, it might not really affect you or you might have mild symptoms or you might even be asymptomatic please don't take this chance look what happened to me i thought that my age and my health would have protected me and i've been in bed for three weeks i couldn't teach couldn't work couldn't do anything again as i said probably the worst experience of my life so please don't take this chance be safe stay safe keep the other safe it's a responsibility not just towards you but towards the people around you as well hopefully i'll see you soon with a new video i will update you on my health and we're just gonna go up from here bear with me and soon we'll be back to the usual positive reactions and by the way if you want to check out my music i released recently a new cover song it's called better days and i it's something that i did a few months ago to give some positive message and some hope to people in this dark times and ironically it came out last week as i'm going through this and i actually feel this even more right now and it's here on my channel it's called better days a year of pandemic and the video is actually about this hell of a year that we've gone through, but it has a positive message. The more the video progresses, the more it becomes hopeful, and it shows all the good that can still come out of this, and I really want to be part of this good by doing this. So thank you so much. Bear with me, stay with me, send some positive vibes, and I'll see you soon. This is Marco. Let's talk about singing. Let's go back to singing.